Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to another episode of Questions with L.A. We'll get into your questions, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Recent forecasts predict that the summer of 2024 will be one of the hottest ever on record, with temperatures expected to soar into the triple digits in many areas. The Northeast, Midwest, and even parts of the Pacific Northwest are expected to experience above normal temperatures. And likely with that, drum roll please, normal energy bills for households will be absolutely on the rise. Folks, this is why Peggy and I stay cool with this magical little device. I love the cool air, cost savings, and peace of mind it brings me. This device fills my home or office or the studio with icy cold air without traditional electricity. It's a potential lifesaver if a blackout ever does occur during one of these upcoming deadly heat waves. Folks, as I said earlier, it was 110 degrees on the other side of the Santa Monica Mountains last week. I've never seen it that hot. The new version includes InstaFrost technology that uses revolutionary frost jets to get an instant blast of polar air. Simply place it anywhere you need to cool off and enjoy up to 25 hours of freezing cold air from virtually anywhere. Make yourself as happy and as cool as I am this summer by visiting www.easysummercool.com. That's www.easysummercool.com, easysummercool.com, or simply click the link in the description box below for up to 60% off today with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and fast USA shipping. Folks, if you have a question, it's uh, questions at lamarzulli.net, questions at lamarzulli.net. Let's get right into it. This is from Fred. LA, I love your assessment of how Nephilim are tied into fallen angels. And I also agree that the great deception coming is an alien invasion of some sort. Ask yourself why Elon Musk needs to put thousands of satellites in space for internet use when geostationary satellites would do the same thing and with fewer, far fewer satellites. My dad was a range rat, radar engineer, back in the Gemini and Apollo program. If he were alive today, he'd tell you the same thing. No reason for it. But I say what a better way to deceive humanity than to put together a laser show between these very close satellites to mimic some sort of an alien mothership sitting in orbit and with their close proximity to each other. They could even mimic it uh, to moving around the planet. But the other reason why I'm emailing you is that I watched this episode, um, this video, and it reads me about the timing of our Lord's return and wanted to know if you've seen it or any thoughts on it. It's pretty long, two hours, but so far my biblical knowledge hasn't found any faults in it, but I consider myself a baby when it comes to that. So he gives me the link. I have not seen it. Um, I don't have time to sit and watch anything that's two hours long. I mean, I just don't. I just don't have the time. Even at night when my wife and I, at the end of the day, we want to watch a film, there are certain things that I will watch, certain things I just won't. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I have not seen the film. I will say this. I believe that the coming great deception, and I talk about this in a new book, Shameless Plug, we signed a deal with Charisma um, a while back, and it's fast-tracked. Uh, we, signed the, we signed the deal like three weeks ago, and the book is ready to go to the printer. That's how quick it is. The book was finished. I went to them, and I said, and we, and we, had, we struck a deal, and we went immediately in to get, sent them um, the hard copy. They sent us back to galleries. We made our corrections, and it's uh, on the fast track. It'll, it'll go to printers on Thursday. This is it. It'll be out in October. But at the end of the book, I give you a scenario of what I think is going to happen. This, and this ties in with the lasers and all this other stuff. Um, could we be looking at a false alien invasion? Yeah. There is a film that I showed. Uh, in fact, I just did this today. Paul Begley's got a webinar, which will be aired, I think, August 6th, August 4th, August 6th. Go to our website, elianmarzulli.com. We'll have that up as soon as I get the link. We'll have it up. But there's a, um, a clip that was shown last year's Super Bowl. And it's for some, some website that you don't even know. At the last five seconds, they show you what it is. Well, it's an alien invasion. Mile-wide crafts are appearing all over the earth, in Paris, in America, everywhere. And it, it makes it really clear. Finally, people begin to look up, and there's the craft above them. 
In my opinion, this is predictive programming. Yes, I'm familiar with Project Bluebeam, very much so. Could we be looking at a fake alien invasion or could a nuclear event trigger the real deal? I propose the latter. This is in my book, which will be coming out in the fall, that we're gonna get 500 copies. I'm gonna autograph those copies. Only 500 will I autograph. Maybe we'll do more, but I'm gonna autograph the first 500. That, that will be the pre-sale for the first 500 copies. And once we get the hard copy, or once we know we're gonna get the hard copy, we'll put that out. So let's continue. This is from Tracy. Hey, LA, as you know, the alien deception will be them claiming to be our creators. Absolutely. When they show up, they will say that we created all life on this planet, genetically manipulated early man, started the world's religions, started the world's um, civilizations. Now at this critical juncture in human history, we, your space brothers, are back to usher mankind into the golden age. Don't buy it for a minute, folks. That's the coming great deception. That is the strong delusion. The flower of life is a common pattern seen in crop circles. The flower of life is said to contain all the patterns of creation as they emerge from the great void. Aliens will claim that they have been trying to tell us that they were our creators all along to the use of the flower of life as seen in so many crop circles. However, you may find it interesting to know that one of the first, if not the very first, known depictions of the flower of life was found burned into granite in a way that they can't explain to this day in the temple of Osiris, located in Abydos, Egypt. Wow. You and I know, but Osiris is just another name for Lucifer. Yes, I agree. This is important because it demonstrates how the alien deception actually has satanic roots. I will share a photo of the flower of life in the temple of Osiris. Um, have a blessed... Have you ever checked into this connection? Oh, I have never checked into it. That's really interesting. I will, and, and again, I've got to do some homework for this and this, and I will do some homework later. And if I find it pertinent, I will get back to you, uh, kind viewer, for watching and let you know what I think about this. Um, remember, when Moses and Aaron show up in Egypt, there's a full-blown occult paradigm already there. It's full-blown. Everyone is, is following these ancient gods, which in my opinion, all have demonic origins. So when Moses throws down a staff and it becomes a serpent, that in itself is troubling. The Egyptian priests do the same thing with their staff. In fact, the Egyptian priests are able to duplicate the first three plagues that God sends upon the Egyptians. It's important to know that Egypt was a center of occult activity. Dragon worship, there's no doubt about it. This is from Chris. Hey, Mr. Marzulli, I really saw this short interview with Riley Gaines, the collegiate swimmer. I'm familiar with who she is, who has been standing up against the transgender movement. She talked about agitators in her university hallways that threatened to cause her physical harm. In this interview, she described those people as being soulless. This immediately caught my attention and reminded me of what you taught recently at Calvary Church in Jupiter. Um, thank you very much for your work. I live in Ohio. Hope we get, to, well, I'll be in Ohio, Chris. We're going to be there uh, the latter part of the month at the Go Therefore conference. Uh, John Adam will, will show that uh, at the very end of this clip. He'll put up where we're going to be. You can go to our website, lamarzulli.com, and you can see exactly where I'm going to be. I'll be speaking at the Go Therefore conference. I'm the last person on Friday night, deliberately, so I can go long, and I will go long with new information, and I hope to see you there. I'm also on Paul Begley's conference, August, I think it's 4th or the 6th. It's a webinar. I recorded it today. Also, right after the Go Therefore conference, I'll be going to Pastor Bell's church. I'll be speaking there on Sunday morning. All that is up on the website. So, look, the idea of solace, I don't know. I'm not there in the hallway, and I can't. That may just be a figure of speech for Riley Gaines, and that's really all I have to say about it. Um, Nephilim are, in my opinion, soulless. They have no soul, and that's why they're looking for a soul. Our, our Karen Wilkinson, and keep her in prayer. She's going through some health problems, folks. I call on you right now to pray for Karen. As the body of Christ, let's come together and petition the Lord to heal Karen. Lord, we just come before you now in Jesus' name, and I pray, Father, this woman has gone through so much. Let your healing come upon her, Lord. Let your healing angels come upon her. May she touch the hem of your garment. May your healing just come upon her, Lord. Overshadow her. May you restore her to what, what should be. So we speak healing out in faith over her. We believe it. We thank you for it. We point to Jesus as our healer, and we thank you in Jesus' name. So this is from Diana. 
L.A., I love your show, and I pray for your protection for you and your family. Thank you. We need it. I really, really miss the politics and prophecy segments of your show. Will you please reconsider bringing them back at least once a week? Well, um, we're messing with that. What we do is on YouTube, and then we point people over to our Rumble channel because we can't. it's no longer safe to talk about the things that I want to talk about on YouTube. So we're respectful of YouTube and their community guidelines. But if I want to say certain things, I have to go to Rumble. And that's just where we are. So this, uh, Diana says, I am 73 and alone except for my dog and cat. I watch your show and several other prophecy shows. And when you're on TV in my home and feel like you're my family and friends, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I'm worried about if we lose Wi-Fi, what am I going to do? Should I get a CB or a ham radio? I want to donate a very small monthly donation of $5. This is, this is the widow's might. You know, D D Diana, you don't have to do that. I appreciate Keep it. Keep it. And I, I appreciate your heart, but you don't need to do that. We have other people who are contributing to what we do to keep us who can't afford it. But God bless you, Diana, and I appreciate your heart, and, and thank you so much. And... Um, you know, folks, prophecy is so important, and for the most part, the church won't teach it. And it's so sad on so many levels. So there you go. So let's get this one. Um, this is just uh, from Sandy, first-time sender. Thank you, learning every day. God bless you for all and all that assist you in development and production. What a wonderful, not a question, just a blessing, um, thanking us for what we do here. You know, Gil Zimmerman and I, my, my business partner and, and the co-director and co-producer of all 10 of our UFO films, folks, you need to check those out. We're the only Christian ministry on the planet that has 10 films on the burgeoning UFO phenomena. It's right here. UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. And I just, you know, Sandy, thank you so much for the kind words. And, um, you know, we're, we're on the front line, so we do covet your prayers. And we thank you for it. This is from Nathan. Hey, LA, I love your work. Been following you for years. Well, thank you, Nathan. I appreciate that. Really enjoyed the Crop Circle film. Uh, I'm also a lifelong Brood Warrior player. Just wondering if that was the home screen ambience that I heard when watching recently. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Thanks for everything you do. Keep up the great work. I'm based out of the Ozarks. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help support your research outside of financial report. Nathan, thank you so much for the kind words. You know, folks, um, oh, there's just there's 30 films in our in our catalog. Streaming.lamarzuli.net for four dollars and ninety nine cents you can watch any of them. Okay, what are you waiting for? Time to do your homework. Our new book is coming out. I will be speaking at Go There for. I've already said that. Then Pastor Bell's uh, uh, August six. I think uh, Pastor uh, Paul Begley's webinar. I did like over an hour uh, re pre record on that today. Uh, look, time is short. Time is short. And things are heating up in the Middle East. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But know this, the prophecy says that Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling, will become a cup of trembling to the entire world. Prophecy is there in our Bibles for a reason. It makes up almost a third of the biblical prophetic narrative. Know this, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, Amos 9, 14 and 15. I will gather my people. I will gather my people. I will gather the captives of my people Israel. I will gather the captives of my people Israel. 1948, the captives are gathered. They will build the waste cities and inhabit them. Check, another prophecy fulfilled. They will plant vineyards and drink the wine from them. Check, another prophecy fulfilled. So far there's three prophecies in, in that little, little passage, Amos 9, 14 and 15. They will plant gardens and eat the fruit from them. Check. This is the kicker. I will plant them in their land, and never again will they be pulled up out of the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. That's a promise. You can bank on that. Jesus returns where? Everyone knows. Walla Walla, Michigan. No. Jesus returns to Jerusalem, and from Jerusalem he reigns for a thousand years. If you're in a non-millennial church, maybe it's time to think again. There is a literal thousand-year reign of the Messiah. I think he's coming back soon. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. We'll see you back again with another episode of Questions with L.A., or maybe we'll go back to the main set over there and do a UFO update. Whatever it is, thank you so much. God bless you. Take care.
What happens if a mile wide craft shows up of Washington? Who's behind it? Well, at some level, the government, the military, and the intelligence community. It is a threat, and it's going to soon become a global threat, and it's going to require a global response. The UFO phenomenon has become the great off-putting. We're going to get disclosure accidentally. An interesting time to be alive. We live in a time where literally the government told us these UFOs are real, we don't know what they are. The question then is, who are they in contact with? Are they truly extraterrestrial? Has mankind been visited by inhuman entities? What are your closing thoughts in regard to disclosure? Floodgates are open and all bets are off right now. They're definitely conditioning the masses for some kind of revealing of technology. We're being visited by extraterrestrials. If you look at the late night talk hosts, when they're talking to all the presidents, and they always bring up the question, you know, are you gonna tell us anything? If you look at their faces, they know something. Folks, the phenomenon is not going away. We go up, they show up. We go up, they come down. To warn of what we believe is the coming great deception.